My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hi, I'm Skevi Constantino. Uh, today's leadership quote comes from Brandon Lee. Immortality is to live your life doing good things and leaving your mark behind. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. It's episode 40, 40, Bill. It's episode 44. Howdy, Leader Assistants. I hope you're having a great day. Just wanted to remind you to join our online communities at facebook.leaderassistant.com and slack.leaderassistant.com. Facebook just crossed the 1,000 mark, so I'm very excited to have that many amazing Leader Assistants join us on Facebook. And then I believe Slack is up to about 620 or so. Um, So yeah, just keep it coming. Uh, keep joining, uh, keep sharing tips, uh, tricks, keep asking for help, sharing job postings, encouraging each other. Um, that's the whole purpose of those online communities, so I hope you can join us. Today's episode show notes can be found at leaderassistant.com slash 44. So let's jump right in. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Leader Assistant Podcast. Today's guest is Skevi Constantino from the PA Way. Skevi, thanks for joining. No, thank you for having me. It's a real privilege to to be on your uh, show. Great. Well, let's talk about a little bit of uh, your backstory. What was your very first job? My very first job was working in my parents' fish and chip shop uh, in Wolverhampton. Uh, That was my very first job. Was it uh, the best fish and chips in town? (laughs) Um. At the time, yes. Uh, I don't know now. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, but no, it, it was a good shop. What did you learn from that job that you still use today? Um, how to engage with customers, um, you know, how to deal with orders and multitasking because um, it was it was actually quite, quite a good tool to learn at a young age. Hmm. When did you first realize that an assistant or a personal assistant or an executive assistant was a job that you could have? Well, I kind of fell into it um, by chance. Um, and then I realized it would fit the skill set that I had at the time. Um, and that's why I started off training as an admin and then worked up um, worked up to PA and then EA. Um, so, yeah, that was a few few years ago. How long have you been an assistant? Uh, I think now from around 2012. Okay. Yeah. And then what what do you love about the role of an assistant? I love being able to help people knowing that from the moment they, you know, start their working day, that it's all organized because I've assisted with them Um knowing that I've coordinated all their paperwork and documents, their travel, all the necessary things so that they can get through the day really flawlessly. Um, But I also love the industry um, in terms of the PA networks out there and the community spirit that we all have. Awesome. So Mm -hmm. what's can you describe a time when you saved the day as an assistant? Oh, that's a good question. I think when you're an assistant, you kind of save the day every day because <laughs> that's your that's your goal from the moment you get in. Um, but I've saved the day, so to speak. Um, you know, I used to work for one company that, you know, it took me months to organize a conference um, and everything. And then like with all the agendas and everything, and then the, the, the boss calls me in at around five o'clock and said, close the door. We're going to make everyone redundant, including yourself. Um, And I'm going to announce it at the conference. So I was like, okay. So I kind of had to save the day in that respect because 
you know, it was going to be a very different tone to the conference. Um, people were obviously going to be very upset. So I had to coordinate everything that I'd spent months doing to, um, to make sure that it would go ahead at nine o'clock in the morning. So he did say to me, he goes, you executed it really well because I had to put my personal feelings aside about the fact that I was going to lose my job because I had to put everybody else first. So it was kind of saving the day in that respect. Wow. That's pretty, uh, yeah, that's a pretty rough, uh, pivot in that event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's the biggest mistake you made as an assistant and what did you learn from the experience? I think when I think about making a mistake, obviously you make the general mistakes, you know, with your admin tasks. But I think on a, on a, on a deeper level to that question, I think the biggest mistake I made as an assistant is not self-learning from the start. So I'm very like all about self-learning now and learning about my industry even more. But I think if I'd learned, started learning more in, say, 2012, then I would have a much deeper understanding. So I think my only regret in that respect is not, you know, getting my head down and getting more into, into the industry from a very early uh, stage. Hmm. What's the number one struggle you have uh, related to being an assistant? I would say as an assistant um, from, you know, previous experience, um, I would say the struggle is perhaps not being recognized or feeling that you have a sense of presence in the office um, and sometimes being disregarded um, from previous companies that I've worked for. So um, it's just it's just that really having be, be, knowing your worth um, in, in the office. Who's the most influential person in your life? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I would say two things, two parts to that question. One, my biggest influence in in that has been for the reason where I got to where I am, surprisingly, is actually um, Michelle Rue Jr., who's um, you know a very well known um, chef and his family. Um, because my original background is hospitality. Um, he's always been my biggest influence in terms of like celebrity status, but in terms of, um, influence in general, I would say all the short stories that we exchange as an assistant industry, people that I meet on a daily basis, I, I learn, I get inspired by life on a daily basis is what I'm trying to say. So let's talk about a couple of practical things. Do you have experience managing your executive's email inbox and what's a tip that you would share with others trying to do the same? Yeah. So for, you know, everyone works very differently. Some people like to be very self-sufficient and look after their own, but, um, previous people that I've worked for, um, they've always just made sure that I've always deleted all the chain mail, um, you know, categorize everything as important in progress or completed, um, and just staying on top of it, really, so that they're not overloaded with information. What's something that you would tell an executive to look for in an assistant if they're trying to find one? I think you would need to find someone who was a um, flexible and adaptable person, someone that can work well in a team but at the same time be self-sufficient um and you know perhaps have that social element of being a people's person um, i'm not saying you have to be like super bubbly and extroverted but you know being able to go over to certain departments and build those relationships is always i think a really handy thing to do in, in an office environment hmm. yeah that's a great tip so what about managing constant interruptions? How do you handle the distractions and what, what would you um, <laughs> encourage other assistants to do to manage these in, in, interruptions? Um, I think it's having those conversations. If you're dealing with multiple stakeholders and they all want you at once and they're all coming at you at once, it's just having a very calm demeanor of saying, I, I'm, I understand what your, what your requests are. I'm listening. Um, can we sit down so I can structure uh, what I want to do? It's just being able to say, you know, to kind of 
politely push back. Otherwise, the assistant's going to be overwhelmed with too much information and not know who to prioritize. Alternatively, if, uh, if, uh, if you are able to take your laptop to a much quieter space and, and work, perhaps, um, then you, you don't get people coming over to your desk every five Yeah, I like going in a dark closet. And locking myself in. That's, that's my tip. <laughs> Listen, I'm an introvert. I, you know, if you, if it was professional, I'd sit there with my headphones on and I'd zone out. But apparently, that's not a good office practice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the PA way. When and why did you start it? So the PA way is a fun lifestyle platform for assistants, admin and office managers to help inspire, empower and motivate them to be the very best assistants that they can be with learning and development in there as well. But it's also I created it last year um, because I got to the point where I just thought, you know what, we're all Going, we're all creating all these invitations for amazing events and dinners, but when does the assistant ever get to go? They never get an invite. They just have to coordinate them. So I kind of, with the PA way, have spun, spun it in a different way in that I want the assistant to feel like a boss. So I take them on events. I take them on fam trips. We do learning and development to get them to level up to be the best assistants that they can be. But at the same time, the boss wins because uh, he or she has a very um, resourceful assistant from the social networking side of things and the learning and development. Hmm, that's awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so what? Uh, what's an example of, you know, I've, I've get a lot of assistants reach out to me and say, you know, my boss doesn't respect me or, you know, my boss will yell at me or bully me what's an example of a type of bullying you've seen happen to assistants um so i've had and it's a shame really that i say this but i've had a lot of assistants say that they feel that they're being victimized or bullied at work um and i would say to them you know to kind of stay strong and try and keep self motivated because you are awesome and without you you know offices wouldn't be able to function but at the same time you know in terms of being practical take those appropriate measures speak to your manager who will then be able to help you well being advice or um speak to your hr department and follow those procedures that are in your company so Kind of along those lines, how would you encourage an assistant in making their voice heard? Because a lot of times, if they're, especially if they're being bullied, uh, disrespected, then they're really struggling to feel like people are listening to them or that their voice is heard. It, yeah, and uh, you know that's a, that's a really valid question. I I think you know. If people are in the unfortunate situation where they are being bullied at work and it's getting too much and they've tried to um, bring this forward to the manager's attention and perhaps nothing's being done, then the be in my opinion, the best solution is to perhaps explore other working, um, com you know, get a different job because you don't deserve to be in that toxic environment when – because – I'm so passionate about the assistants, especially the ones that are, you know, um, that come to my events and things uh, as well, because I get to meet them in person. You know, I wouldn't want them to come to any harm or for them to feel that they're alone. Um, it's kind of I'm trying to create like this one squad because the PAOA community is called the squad. Um, and so that they can all share like stories and, 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 and whatnot. So. It's basically just getting them to realize that their voice is first and foremost to be heard and not to let anybody put out their, their light um, because we're all in this together, as my good friend Diana Brandle would say. Hmm. So if you could snap your fingers and instantly give all assistance more of something, what would it be? I would think empowerment. 
I would just want them to feel so empowered that then that when they walk into the meeting to take the minutes, they they know they don't even have to question that they deserve to be sitting at that table as an executive business partner to the to the to the people that they support. Um, you know, they deserve to be in that room um, and that they're not just a PA. Um, so I would want to give them the, the gift of empowerment for, for that. What's something that you wish assistants would do differently? In what respect? Is in just, uh, you know, in, in, in the role? Yeah, just uh, in, as, as they see themselves as assistants, what's something, you know, you've talked about being empowered and confident. But yeah. Maybe what's something that you've seen assistants do that you're like, you know what, I wish that they wouldn't do that. I think it's, it's, again, going back to the empowerment, the confidence. I wish I, I wish I could get some assistance to realize, you know, you're going to get the assistance that just want to come and do their job and go home. And that's fine. You know, that works for some people. But I wish I could get assistance to realize that when they start networking, it opens up a whole different uh, realm to our industry. And, you know, you get to meet such influential people and learn things so it's all about I wish that some assistants would realize that they're not just a PA go in do your job but that you are actually so resourceful you have all these things that you can go and learn from like executive secretary and practically perfect PA and all these amazing platforms and so just to level up so I wish they could see their potential is what I'm trying to say no that's great I that's kind of why I started goburrows.com is is one of the big reasons was I realized that for my first six, seven years as an assistant, I was kind of working under a rock and I was not networking and I, I didn't even know, but maybe one or two other assistants. And so yeah. I just was like, man, there's, I got to get myself out there. And as I started to and started uh, meeting um, assistants all over the world, then I just realized that, wow, there's so much I can learn from them. Uh, there's so much I can be encouraged and supported by them and for them. And yeah, it's just a huge, huge win for assistants to put themselves out there, be a little bit vulnerable and connect with other assistants. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's cool to hear. Yeah. So what's a productivity hack that you like to use that you just could not live without? Do you know what? Those people that know me on a really personal level will tell you I'm so not down with the kids, like with apps and technology. Uh, I'm quite an old soul. So I'm going to take it back to that and just say my productivity hack, if if you want to call it that, is literally my to-do list. Because that to-do list is why I am productive and get to do my day job. So I'm quite, uh, you know, literally just get some really nice stationery and just work off a to-do list. Um, I'm not going to start saying I have every app on my phone because the only apps that I have is YouTube. (laughs) 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 The priorities. Um, Yeah, um, yeah, I I would just literally say my to-do list is my productivity hack. I love that because I I actually think that that sounds very like you have a very simple system and sometimes <laughs> yeah. sometimes the simplest of systems is the most productive of systems because you're not yeah. having to get distracted but you're also not having to make these decisions on which app am I going to use for this and which you know which tool am I going to use for this it's just no I'm just going to my to-do list and getting stuff done so uh, yeah, no, and it, it, it's so true what, what what you're saying. I just think, you know, I'm all for advancements and getting things. To, if something can work better, then you can you can do it. But at the same time, like, you know, why fix it if it ain't broke sort of thing? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say uh, if it's going to take me, you know, just as long to organize the task into some system, then I might as well just get the task done. Yeah. Uh, how have you pushed yourself out of your comfort zone over the years? That's a really good question. Um, I would, okay. So again, twofold. So I would say pushing myself out of my comfort zone happened when I was 17. Um, so I had like a bit of a life changing, uh, situation. And I think it's kind of where you get that emotional state of freedom, um, where you see things in a very different light. 
Um, and so my mindset is now, you know, you can only try and you have to go out there and get the opportunities yourself. They don't just fall in your lap. Um, so what's the, what's so wrong about pushing yourself to try something new? At least you gave it a go. Um, and you know, if you fail, so to speak, then that's fine because you can just get back up again and learn through those, um, you know, through that experience and you're going to be able to use that experience to level up, to do it better the second time or the third time. Um, so I've pushed myself out of my comfort zone by creating the PA way. I, I didn't know anything about websites or anything like that. Um, and I've, you know, with my website guy launched two versions of the PA way all within less than a year. Nice. Yeah. So that's me trying to get down with the kids with technology. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's my thing. I need to like, you know, really embrace 2019 and stop thinking I was born in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So what's one topic that you wish you knew more about? Um, on, on, on a personal note, it's going to be astronomy mm -hmm. because I'm absolutely obsessed with planets and stars and constellations, everything. And um, so I started again, going back to the comfort zone thinking, okay, I'm not a very scientific minded person. Um, but you know, we, I can all, you know, about physics and all this and that. So I started to like, um, book workshops where you could go like look through the telescopes and that sort of thing. Um, and that's took, that's now on the back burner. So I need to resurrect that. <laughs> so what's a, do you have a, other hobbies or, um, <laughs> is that kind of the hobby that you need to get going again? <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't have time for hobbies as such because I'm working my day job and then any time that I have left, even like half an hour goes into the PA way. Um, so I'm kind of working two full time jobs. If I do decide I have to wind down, um, I'm always in the cinema. I would say going to the cinema and going to concerts and gigs is my hobby. Hmm. And do you see the PA way? as a hobby in, in one sense, because I've, I kind of see my, you know, my podcast, for example, is a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And I like doing the audio editing and, um, you know, just kind of the production of it. Yeah. Do you, do you um, find that, or, or do you see the PA way more as, no, this is just another job. <laughs> no, not in the slightest because it, it, you know, that phrase when they say, when you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. That, that is the PA way for me. And when I launched version two of the PA way, um, on the 14th of February, that literally was a labor of love. I cannot tell you how many hours, how much my diet went out the window, everything to get that website up. But I wanted it because the assistant industry means so much to me. Um, and I'm very blessed that my website guy, who is also my friend, you know, was so, so supportive about it. Um, so it's not really a, 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 um, a hobby as, um, as such, it's more like what you said, it's really fun and uh, you get addicted to it. So, yeah. So what's one book or resource that you would recommend to all assistants? It's actually not an assistant book, but it's the book called you are a badass, um, mm -hmm. by Jen, I can't pronounce her surname. It's sincero. Um, that book changed my mindset. Um, you know, it's basically understanding your, the self-love and the self-worth in a really, what I would call PA way language. Um, so, and it's all about realizing you do have a right to be here and you, you are worthy of all these amazing things that you, you know, the universe has give you, so to speak. So that's actually a really good book because you, it's one of those books that you want to read and then have like your own background music to it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, kind of like what you see in the films. So yeah, that it would be, it would be that. What makes someone a leader? I think a good listener is someone who is a leader. I think someone who is patient is a good leader. Um, I think these are two traits that you need for leadership, because if you're going to be leading by example, you need to be listening to the people and have the patience to know that not everybody is up to scratch. Um, you know, everyone has different techniques and styles. So I think they're two very um, important traits to have for leadership. Yeah, that's great. I totally agree. 
Thank you. Well, Skevi, thanks so much for taking time out of your day. And uh, obviously, you've got a busy, busy schedule. So appreciate you <laughs> joining the show. And um, everybody listening uh, is very blessed to have you contribute to the conversation. And where could we support you? And where can we find you online? So first of all, um, the privilege is mine, honestly, seriously. Thank you so much for having me um, on, on your podcast. Um, and uh, the support of the assistants, you know, they are the lifeblood of the PA way. And I'll always, always do it for them first and foremost. Um, where you can find me. So it's um, www.thepaway.co.uk. Um, you can find us on LinkedIn uh, and myself. Um, and then on Twitter, it's the PA way. And on Instagram, it's the PA Way UK. Great. Well, I'll share all those links in the show notes so that everybody can get to them easily. And yeah, thanks again for joining. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, Skevy, for a great conversation. Um, really appreciated your insight. Check out the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 44. And we will see you next week. Apple Podcasts. Go Bullos.com.